So what's the difference between a production music library and a royalty-free library? In this video, I'm gonna tell you the three main differences between a production music library and a royalty-free library like Pawn 5 and Audio Jungle. Number one, libraries like Pawn 5 and Audio Jungle, even though they are a music library, they are really a marketplace. They do sell other assets like stock video and stock photography. So really what they're doing is that they are providing royalty-free assets and music just happens to be one of them. That's the main difference between a marketplace like Pawn5 and a production music library like let's say The Wolf Music which I actually mentioned on one of my latest videos and I'll leave the link in the description so you can go and check out this uh, production uh, music library, the oldest one in the world. So that's the main difference. When you join a library like Pawn5 or even Audio Jungle, you can decide what you want to sell because it's called a marketplace. If you're an amateur photographer or even a professional photographer, you could be selling your stock photos in these marketplaces. Places like Pawn5, for example, you could be selling not only your photos, but as well the music. So if you are really multi-talented person or a very creative being and you have different skills under your belt, you could be doing stock video, stock photography, and even music. Now, when you join a production music library, it's very specific. It's only about music licensing and nothing else. Okay, you don't go and join a production music library like D Wolf and say, hey, I have some stock photo that you might be interested in selling. They only specialize on music and they only want to attract composers. That's one of the main difference between production music libraries like D Wolf Music in this case, and we're just gonna stick with this one for now. But, but there are many of them out there, okay, that only specialize on music licensing and that's all they do. And then you have other libraries like Audio Jungle and Pond5, which are libraries, but they are really a marketplace. So that's the main difference. So that's the difference number one. Difference number two, the upload process. When you upload music to a library, a production music library, you usually upload an album of 10 or 15 songs, depending, and it usually goes around a, a specific genre. So for example, you might be working on a acoustic or a folk album and you will upload that to the production music library it will usually be a collection of songs with a particular theme or a genre so it could be separated from different albums that you might have in that uh, library that's that's very specific because it's very focused and that means that you're working on a, a group of songs that are going to go into an album format like back in the days when artists would just release an album, a collection of songs that it will have a particular name or a theme and, and that will be it really. When you upload to a marketplace or to a library like Pawn5 and Audio Jungle, there is really no such a thing as an album. You can just upload as much as you want really. And the upload process is much, much more uh, straightforward if you will, meaning that it's just like a drag and drop uh, your files into the actual marketplace or into your profile, into your account, and the description uh, and the tagging and the keywording is a little bit more straightforward as well. Uh, there is no limit really. There is a limit in certain libraries like Audio Jungle where you can only upload five tracks at a time, but they are not considered albums, meaning that you could be uploading one day an acoustic track, the next day a rock track, the third day a corporate track, and you could be uploading, and they all work uh, as individual files. And then you can create your own collections within your own profile. Uh, but after that, you can carry on on submitting, you can carry on on uploading tracks to your account on Pond5 and Audio Jungle in a library uh, like D Wolf Music, you will just work with a particular album. You will submit it, especially in the beginning. You will just submit it and, and see how that will work out. Uh, but you don't just keep on submitting songs like you will do in Pond5, where I can just submit every single day. And, and it's just a matter of uh, building a body of work. If I'm submitting to a place like D Wolf Music, it's really like I will just upload an album and that's it. I'm not just bombarding them with uh, album after album after album. It's a little bit of more of a, of a different um, relationship, which brings me to the third main difference between a production music library 
in a royalty free library like Pwn5 and Audio Jungle. When you start uploading your tracks to a library, a production music library like D Wolf Music, for example, you need to start building relationships. You need to approach them, you need to start sending emails. And again, I will leave the link in the description of a, of a video that I did quite recently uh, sharing an interview with the CEO of D Wolf Music USA where he talks more about this about the whole process of how many emails he gets from composers, how many submissions uh, he is getting from composers as well via email in order to build a relationship, in order to maybe be considered, uh, in order for them to either take you as a composer or not. And it has to do a lot with networking and see how you can approach uh, not only the CEOs of this type of library, but the people who are really uh, responsible for taking on new composers. That's, that's a big, big difference because you have to make uh, the first attempt to send an email and there's a whole art to it. And it's almost like, uh, I wouldn't call it cold calling, but you have to reach out to the library. And that's why they say in the industry that you have to do the research and see which library you think that your music will fit, okay? So if you don't make trailer music, you're not gonna go and approach a trailer production music library that they specialize on that. And that's why it's important to see what kind of music they're doing, what kind of music they are really uh, getting placed, and what kind of artists they're working with. And maybe you can find your, yourself saying, hey, I could be part of that uh, roster of composers and I could be part of one of those artists that are in that particular library. Now, in Pwn5 and Audio Jungle, it's completely different. You don't need to build a relationship. You don't need to send an email to nobody. You don't need to say, hey, what's up? Can I just uh, send you some music? All you need to do really is open an account and you just submit your ID and then you just start uploading your music to your catalog and go through the review process. There is such a thing as a communication between the contributor, as we're called on Pwn5, and an author, which is what we are being labeled on Audio Jungle. Uh, but that's a support, that's, that communication is between the, the artist or the composer or the contributor or the author and the actual uh, support team, which is actually uh, uh, helping us when, with whatever uh, inside information we might need, whatever helps we, we, we might need. But really what happens is that you just start submitting music and you just go through a review process, and, but you don't have to go on a one-on-one -on -one email and say, hey, John, I'm really interested in uploading music to Pond5. Is it okay if you can check my profile on SoundCloud and uh, can I send you some demos and maybe you can, it, that, that, that works different. This is a different relationship that we composers have with royalty-free libraries and with production music libraries. That being said, it's becoming a little bit harder as time passes by to join places like Pwn5, uh, meaning that not only you have to provide a form of ID, which is a great idea. Uh, libraries like, like Audio Jungle, I don't know if they are still accepting people without a form of ID, which I think is crazy because that creates a lot of clone accounts. In Audio Jungle, we had that problem a long time ago where there will just be clones accounts, composers that they will have five, 10 different accounts. Uh, with just copy paste kind of tracks all over, all spread out over the marketplace. That's really bad for us composers. Now, when you upload or when you first get started, you provide not only a form of ID, but it's a good idea as well to have a, something going on online. And you can have a website, you can have a SoundCloud account. It's a good idea to have these things and show some kind of online presence as a composer. And this for Pond5, lately they have been introducing this and say, hey, we wanna know more about you because the quality control has been increased as well, which is one of the main differences as well uh, in terms of the mindset for newcomers and composers, even composers in the music licensing industry, they do believe that libraries like Pond5 or Audio Jungle, they have uh, very low quality music versus what is in production music library. They are obviously accepting a lot of more people on marketplaces like Pond5 and Audio Jungle, and anybody can participate. It's the same with YouTube. If you have high skills of uh, a video editing or of a filmmaking, your videos are gonna be much, much better than mine because I am not a professional uh, filmmaker. So you probably have the skills to do that, but you can still upload your, your videos onto YouTube and I can upload my videos as well onto YouTube. So we can all participate in this platform. Now this is just an analogy really of a marketplace like Pond5 and Audio Jungle versus a production music library. Now, what is the main difference as well when it comes down to the earnings 
and this is a bonus really, which is number four, is performance royalties. This is probably one of the most confusing uh, topics in the music licensing world, okay? And I just wanna make it as simple as possible for you, especially if you're a beginner, to understand that even though you might sell music on royalty-free libraries, you can still be getting performance royalties with a PRO. I'm not gonna cover what a PRO is in this particular video, but I have a lot of videos talking about how to register your music on a PRO, what a PRO is, and why you should do it, because any serious composer should be affiliated with a PRO, okay? So that's one of the biggest uh, misconceptions, even from people that are in this industry of music licensing. In my experience, there's two types of composers, those who do either production music library and those who do only royalty-free music libraries on marketplaces like Pond5 and Audio Jungle, okay? Those are the two types of composers, but there's a third one, okay, which is where you should belong, all right? And that third one is the composer who does everything and does both, okay? This is what I've been taught by my mentors, and my mentors are in Pond5 and all the other royalty-free libraries, and as well, they are in production music libraries as well. Why? because you want to target the whole marketplace. You want to target the whole industry. Royalty-free music libraries and production music libraries equals music licensing. It's all the same. Stock music, royalty-free music libraries, production music libraries, all of them are part and they are under the umbrella of music licensing. It's a little bit confusing for most, it was confusing for me as well. I found myself in a pool of misinformation and all of the experts telling me which one was the best. The reality is that the easiest way to get started in music licensing is to join a marketplace in a library like Pond5 and Audio Jungle. Once you get your foot in the door, you can start building a body of work and as you get better as a composer, you can start approaching the production music libraries, which takes a little bit of more time and it requires you to be a little bit more patient. So the best way to start getting uh, your foot in the door and to start practicing is by joining a library like Pond5 and Audio Jungle and any royalty-free libraries for that matter because that way you will experience rejection, you will experience, uh, you will get familiarized with the upload process, you will be learning a lot about description, keywords and tagging, which is essential in music licensing. There's nothing more important than metadata okay these are stuff that for the newcomers a little bit overwhelming because you might think that your problem is the mixing and the mastering of your music track and that's not true and the music could be amazing but if you have a metadata that is really crap your music is not going to be found and you're not going to be making sales okay and this applies for both type of libraries production music libraries and royalty free libraries a royalty free library is pretty much you're just building a body of work and the best part is that you can get better and better as you practice in the real world okay and you're earning money as you get along as you start joining other libraries as you're testing the marketplace and the most important thing is that you're testing yourself to see what kind of music can you produce what kind of music can you write what kind of music you can be uploading to libraries like pond5 and audio jungle before you start approaching big, big production music libraries and the big boys, like they call them, you know. But by the time you get there, you are already affiliated with a PRO. You are already practicing, okay, in a place where it's, it's so easy to participate. It's so easy to just get going, you know. But a lot of people struggle because they, they realize that they come face to face with their own limitation and with creativity. And they realize that they have to wear now a different hat. It's not just about making the music now. It's about me thinking or you thinking as a businessman. Because once you're in music licensing, either you like it or not, you're in business. You're trying to sell your music or your license to somebody else. So that music track could be used in somebody else's project. And that, my friend, is what is called business because you need to be thinking about your music as a product, okay? And there's no better way to start thinking like that than start doing it. I've been preaching a lot about start doing it. Start getting your foot in the door. Get wet, get dirty, get muddy, get rejected. So when you go and approach the production music libraries, the big boys like they call them, okay, you don't get hurt or you don't feel that your dreams of being in the music licensing world has been shuttered 
because it does take a long time to build the relationships, to upload the tracks. And like I said, you cannot just keep submitting music to production music libraries, okay? It just doesn't work like that, especially in the beginning. You might submit a few music tracks and then you have to see what happens, okay? And at times you have to approach another one and see if you get any placements, if you see any success, any results, what kind of relationships are you gonna be having with these people in this particular library. With Pond5, it's a little bit different. It's kind of like your you're on your own, but at the same time, the beauty of it is you just can keep submitting, get better, practice, okay, in the real world. And there's no limit. Nobody's going to tell you, hey, John, we noticed that you just uploaded 10 tracks and you're uploading now another 10. What the hell are you doing? Nobody's going to say that to you. Even though libraries, royalty-free libraries have limitations, meaning that you can only upload so much in one go, but once that review process has ended and your track has been either rejected or accepted, you can carry on on submitting. And that's the beauty of it. Same with YouTube. I can upload three videos today if I wanted to. Nobody's gonna say on YouTube, hey, what the hell are you doing? You know? So it's just an analogy for that. And the best way is that you're gonna be practicing. So there you go. That's the video of the day. I've been meaning to do this because I get a lot of questions about this and, and I really wanted to break it down to the, the, the bare essentials of what's the difference between a production music library and a royalty-free library or a stock library like, like Pond5 and Audio Jungle. They're all the same, but they're not. They don't work the same. It breaks my heart when I see somebody in the industry talking about Audio Jungle and D-Wolf music in the same sentence because they're not the same. They don't work the same, okay? They're not the same. They are music licensing, but you don't send somebody to go and approach the Wolf Music the same way that you will do Audio Jungle or Pond5. It's not the same, okay? One is a marketplace and it's a library. Another one is just a production music library, and that's it. I hope this video finds you well. I hope this video is helpful to you. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about this, so passionate that I'm sweating just by talking about this topic. If you're somebody that is new to music licensing or to royalty-free libraries, which is the same thing, download my free guide, link in the description. As always, rock and roll, and here's to your success. Mm -hmm.